Hey everyone, it's Joy here. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a really awesome day. So I'm super excited. Pink and Maine contacted me and asked if I wanted to be part of their birthday celebration. They did a IG hop for their eighth birthday last week. And so I decided to make a video for the three cards that I did. So this is the stuff that they sent me. Super, super cute birthday stuff that they've got going on. They've got a couple stamps here with the coordinating dies, super cute. That's the party animals. Then they've got some fun standalone dies. I am using this uh, birthday candle. I'm gonna be using the balloons. I'm not doing the present. I, uh, the stencil, this is like a three or four part stencil, I can't remember, and an embossing folder. And then this flocking, you guys, I have never used flock before and I am so super addicted. So I'm going to start with the Party Animals stamp set. I've got this cute little uh, little puppy who looks to me like he's jumping in the air. And I thought it would be really cute to have him next to the decorative candle die, just one single birthday candle. So that's kind of the card I'm putting together. So I'm doing three cards. I did want to have this video come out last week to coordinate with their IG Hot, but I have a, uh, uh, oh, what is it called? A wisdom tooth that came in is coming in and it just was causing me so much pain last week that I made the video but didn't edit it didn't voice over so I am putting it out this week so anyways I'm gonna be doing some Copic coloring on these cute on this cute little critter I'm using some Nina cardstock this is a classic crest solar white 110 pound it is Copic friendly I'm also using some Copic friendly black ink I either I think I used Lawn Fawn's black ink and then you can see the lid on my markers. Sorry if some of them are upside down. I really do try to pay attention to that to get them right side up. But I just thought this cute little brown little puppy would just be so darling. So I'm just gonna color him. I like to lay down my dark, my medium to kind of blend a little further out and then the light to blend everything together. And I usually tend to go over that twice because that's what I like. To me, I get the best blend when I do that. So I've got him colored and he's so, so darling. And then you have all these little fun confetti pieces. These all have coordinating dies, which is really fantastic, especially, especially those little tiny confetti pieces. So I'm kind of just going with this fun color scheme. I've got orange, yellow, purple, blue, and pink. So just a whole range of colors. So this could be for a boy or a girl, because I think it's kind of you know, meant for like little kids because it's just such a cutie little image. All the images on this Party Animal stamp set is absolutely darling. So I'm just going to add my colors. Most of these I'm doing, except for the dog, most of these I'm doing just two markers because these images are so small. I tend to go with three Copic markers when I'm coloring larger images. I feel like I get a better blend. But like I said, these ones are smaller, so I'm just going with two little colors. So I'm just gonna finish coloring him. I'm just, you know, adding all of these colors to all the little confetti pieces. And then I'm gonna use the coordinating dies to die cut him out. We're gonna do some of the flocking on the candle. And there is some adhesive sheets that makes this so, so simple. I don't think the adhesive sheets were part of the release. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. So now I'm gonna use the coordinating dies and I love Pink and Main. Their pink dies are so, so cute. So I'm just gonna put those in place with some low tack tape and then run that through my die cut machine. I also like on their die cut sheet that it has the outline drawn so you know exactly where your dies go back because I am the worst with trying to put my die cuts back. They never ever fit the same. I'm not sure, maybe I'm just not good at puzzles, I don't know. Okay, so here's the cute decorative candle dies. I die cut the base from white, I die cut the larger flame from yellow, and then I die cut the smaller frame from white. I actually ended up changing that and I came back later and die cut the larger flame from yellow, or excuse me, from white because I didn't like how it looked. So here are these adhesive sheets and one side, this top side's really slick. Like my, my low tech tape did not hold my die cuts down. So I just let them, I just sat them there and ran them through my die cut machine. Then the other die is kind of like the decorative part to the candle and there's quite a few of those little decorative pieces for your candle. So I wanna do the flocking on this decorative piece and on the small part of the flame. So I'm just making sure I know how to line that up correctly. I'm gonna peel back my uh, release paper. I had to cut another one because 
I messed up peeling back release paper. I don't know how that happens, but I did it. So I'm adhering that down to my candle and then I'm going to peel off the other side because this is a double sided um, sticky sheets. And I'm coming in with the Fuzzy Monster Flock. I'm just using my tweezers, sprinkling it on. Now I've never used this before, but it made sense to me to like gently rub it into the adhesive. And number one, this stuff is so soft. If you've never used it, you need to get yourself some because it is so fun. And it's fuzzy and it just stays on there really, really, really good. Now I did look on their website. They also have a Fuzzy Monster Flock with glitter. Uh, but I just had the regular one. I'm coming in with a pink marker to the white parts of those of the candle and just adding some color to that and just blending that out with a blender pen. Okay, so for the background, I'm just using some tape to tape off the bottom. I want to do a little bit of ink blending with Simon Says Stamps Tide Pool Positively Saturated Ink. I just thought bringing in a nice neutral soft green would be... A great background actually so I'm a little heavier at the bottom a little lighter towards the top and then that white part at the bottom is going to have the sentiment so I just want to make sure that my images kind of fit good on there and I do trim this down to a really small size I probably I bet you this is um, three and a quarter by five inches once I'm done trimming it down so I'm just kind of lining everything up, looking for my sentiment. I want to get this stamped. I'm going to stamp that in some black ink. I'm going to use my mini Misty to line this up. And I'm just kind of centering it from side to side. And I want it towards the top of the white space. Because again, I'm going to be trimming this down quite a bit. So I'm just going to stamp that with some black ink a few times to get a good crisp black image. Now here's where I decided to um, do the white background of the larger flame and then I'd put the little flame on there and I'm coming in with the chickadee flock and this one does not have glitter in it but they do have one that has glitter in it on their website and then I'm coming in with a little bit of a yellow marker going around the edge of that flocking and just kind of blending that out on the white cardstock I felt like that looked better than on the yellow cardstock which was my original idea okay so some foam tape behind this because you know me I love some dimension I'm going to get that in place. I'm not going to push it all the way down yet until I get my cute little bear on there and I know exactly where I want it to go. Or bear, my dog. I don't know why I said bear. The cute little puppy dog. Pop him up with some foam tape. And so I just want him to look like he's jumping in the air, like he's super excited. He's throwing this confetti around because it is somebody's birthday. So I'm going to add those other little confetti pieces around and then just adhere them down with some liquid glue. Once I get them in the place, I want them to... B. So they look like they're flying in the air and falling down. So just using my reverse tweezers is super helpful with these tiny images. I'm coming in with my black glaze pen to add some, uh, uh, some, my brain has stopped writing, black glaze pen to his eyes and his mouth. Just gives it a little extra detail and my white gel pen to add some highlights to the little confetti images and things like that. And I'm also adding some little white lines around the candle to look like it's light. Now I did some grounding underneath my candle and underneath the cute little dog with gray, which is what I normally do. It did not turn out good. So I came in with some matching markers to that background ink and added some more little grounding spots and it looks so much better. The gray just kind of bleached out the ink in the background and I didn't like that. I added some little marks to make it look like he was jumping then I added this to a black mat and a white A2 size card panel and this card is done and I think it's so super super cute. Okay so our next our next card is going to be a slimline card. I'm using the birthday candles stencil and I think it's four stencils if I remember correctly. Now I'm using my mini stencil mat and the inks that I'm using I've got two colors in each color family. So this first color here is melon and then I'm gonna do cantaloupe. The next one is tide pool and tropic, bubblegum and sweet, and then marine and cadet. And then for the flames, it's lemonade and sunbeam. So I'm laying this down on my, or my slimline card base or card panel, excuse me. And that measures eight by three inches. And I'm just alternating with my colors, being that I'm using four different sets of colors. 
yeah, four sets of colors. And so I'm just using my mini blender brushes from Simon Says Stamp and just getting that in there. Now I'm not taping off my candles, so some of the color kind of overlaps onto the other candles. If that bothers you, just use some low tack tape to tape around each of those candles, but it really did not bother me at all. So I'm gonna finish up this first row here. Now, as you can see at the beginning, these this stencil is large. So you could do like a five by seven and you could have rows of candles, which is really fantastic. But I just thought one row of, of all of these candles on a slimline card would be a lot of fun. So I'm lining up that stencil again, just so I can finish out the row on the card panel. So I'm making sure that's lined up good, coming back in with my melon and just repeating my color scheme being really careful and I love these mini blender brushes because it's so much easier to get them into these little spots without like over stenciling because I tend to over stencil if I don't tape off a ton of areas and I actually really didn't have that problem other than just the tiniest bit on another candle. Now I'm going to come in with the decorative part of the stencil and this is going to add the fun stuff to your candles. So this is where I'm coming in with cantaloupe, tropic, sweet, and cadet. So this is in the color combinations that Simon Says Stamp has, this is the middle color where I used the first color was the lightest color. And I'm going pretty heavy handed on this because I definitely want to see the difference between the base part of the candle and the decoration part of the candle. I'm just doing the same that I did before, just going with each color, going over each, uh, the next color, which is this, so much easier than the first time of having to kind of count how many candles over before you use that color again and just laying down the decoration. When I'm done, I'll just move this over and line it up. And then I can start adding, I do have to clean it off a little bit because I don't wanna contaminate because there's so much ink on it this time. Definitely make sure your stencil is dry before you put it back on. So I'm lining that back up again and then just finishing out that row. I love these kind of layering stencils. I think it's such an easy way to get a colorful background, especially if you're someone who doesn't like to color or who doesn't feel like you're good at coloring. Stenciling I think is so super easy and these companies are so fabulous coming out with these layering stencils. And I love that this from Pink and Main is so big and you get four different layers. You could just do, you know, no decorative candles and just solid colors, which I think is really fantastic. Okay, so I'm coming in with Lemonade and the larger of the flames, and I'm a little bit heavier towards the base of the flame and a little bit lighter towards the top. Then I'm gonna come in with that smaller one and lay that down, and then I'm using Cadet and just blending over. Doing these is super, super simple. <laughs> Doing the flames on the candle it was so, so easy. And this is a one layer card other than my sequence that I put on top of it, which I don't do one layer cards that often, but I felt like you could get away with it because there's so much color and so much detail on this background. Okay, so I'm taking the sentiment Let's Party from the Yappy Birthday stamp set and it's just cute little chihuahuas on there and it's just a fun little stamp set. I think if I remember correctly looking on their website, I think it's their stamp of the month, but don't hold me to that. <laughs> but I think that's what I saw, but, but please don't hold me to that. Okay, so I'm lining up that sentiment across the stamps, excuse me, across the candle images, and I'm going to stamp that with black ink a few times, and I just like that look. I think it is super, super simple and easy. Then I'm coming in using some, oh, what are these? I forgot what these are called. I think these are Lemon Burst, uh, yes, Lemon Burst from Studio Katia um, Pearls which I felt was perfect because the candles are yellow or the candle flames are yellow. Then I'm adhering that with foam tape to another white panel. And so that is going to measure eight and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then I'm going to put it on a white slimline card base, which is eight and a half by three and a half. So it's a lot of white, but it gives you some dimension. Then I'm coming in with a white gel pen and just adding a few highlights to the candles and the flames. And then that card is finished. And I love this card. I think it's so fun. It's such a birthday card, which you can give this to anybody, girl or guy, which is fantastic. Okay, third and final card. Thank you guys for hanging in with me because these are awesome. I'm using the grid six by six embossing folder and the fun balloons die along with a sentiment from the party animal stamp set. 
So I'm running my white cardstock through the die cut machine with the inside the embossing folder. And when I pulled this out and I saw it, number one, I like this background, but I thought, gosh, this would make a great waffle card. So I may have to do that. And I'm coming in with the sticky sheets, the sticky adhesive sheets, because I want to add a piece of cardstock to the back. So you or you have, okay, the cardstock on the back is going to give the balloons stability once you've die cut through this. And it leaves the front sticky so we can add the flocking to the front. So I'm coming in with that one large balloon. I'm going to die cut that three times. So again, I have cardstock on the back, which is going to give stability. And the adhesive is going to be on the front so we can add the flock to that. I love this card because using the flock was so much fun. I think I've always been intimidated by it and I couldn't even tell you why because I don't even know that much about it, but I love it. So here's another color. Now this one has glitter in it. This is the Sparkling Fuzzy Mittens. You can get this one without glitter. So I'm dumping it on and rubbing it in. Now something I noticed with the glitter ones is that it doesn't go on as smoothly at first, like I had to work at it here to get a nice, good, smooth image because I think the glitter wants to stick to it first before the flocking has a chance to stick to it, if that makes sense. I still love it because I love glitter, but I think I would probably stick with just the regular color. So now you're going to see here the chickadee, how much easier this is when it goes on, how nice it goes on at first. So you don't have to work as hard. Not that that's a big deal because I love all of it, but now I, that's like pretty much done but look at how pretty that is and you guys it's so soft like as we're talking i'm feeling the card right now because it's so much fun then of course the last color is the fuzzy monster which i think is such a cute little name and i'm just going to sprinkle on sprinkle it on and then i'm just gently rubbing it in and i feel like i mean i have no idea if that's how you actually do it but to me it makes sense and then i'm just tapping off the back to get the excess off Okay, so the little strings, I'm using all three of the strings. I'm die cutting that from some black cardstock, and which is a really fun stark contrast to these really colorful balloons, and I really like that look. So I have it laid out on my uh, embossed, my embossing foldered background. I'm going to adhere that pink one directly down. The blue and yellow will have some foam tape behind it because, again, I love to mention. And then I'm just going to adhere the fun little uh, strings down below that. And I love how wavy these strings are. This is a really, this die right here, I think is a really great die to have in your stash because you can make a birthday card for anybody really quick with something like this. And I, it's so funny because I don't have balloons this size. So I'm really glad I have this. I also want to give a shout out to Pink and Main. Thank you so much for asking me to be part of this and sending me such wonderful products to work with because I've had so much fun with these. These are just fantastic. So I'm using some liquid glue to adhere that down. And then I'm going to be doing the sentiment. I am doing that from the Party Animal uh, stamp set. On some black cardstock, I'm going to do some white heat embossing, and it says happy, happy birthday, which I think is just a great little sentiment. So I'm going to stamp that. I prepped my cardstock with my anti-static powder tool. I used some clear embossing ink, and then I'm going to sprinkle on my white embossing powder and then heat that until it's nice and melted. Once it's melted and my embossing powder has dried, I'm going to take a dry cloth and gently buff off that powder on my dark cardstock so you don't, so you don't, so that's not left over and you don't see it. I'm just going to trim that out with my paper trimmer and then we will add some foam tape behind it. And then I want to finish this off with some gold fever confetti from Studio Katya, which I thought just really kind of brought like the party vibe to life. So this is the last card, you guys. I'm hoping that you enjoyed this project. And I hope that you love these new products from Pink and Main. It's their birthday. Definitely go check out their website. Go check out their blog. I'm sure they've got a lot of other things going on. But this is super, super awesome. So happy birthday, Pink and Main. Eight years. That's really, really awesome. If you guys like what you've seen, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell and hit all so you don't miss a video. Definitely comment, like, and share. I appreciate you guys so very much. Thank you again for watching, and I will be back soon with another video.